Now, the rest of the story. Once upon a time, there was a kingdom without a king, or so it seemed, because secreted in the ancient monasteries of Spain, hidden among the carefully guarded records and deeds and documents, was proof of an heir to a distant throne. His name was James, and according to the official documents, James descended from royal blood, possessed many knighted titles and heroic designations, and oh yes, he had a kingdom, a faraway land of his very own. Now, it was not a particularly large kingdom, nor was it richly populated. In fact, James' subjects were comprised merely of simple folk who had wandered there and settled there. But it was James' kingdom nevertheless, so one day he set out to claim it. Spain's own King Alfonso certified James' lineage, and therefore his royal entitlement. So when those who had settled the land protested that they had no king, Spain hurried to James' defense. To maintain order, Spain established diplomatic relations with James' kingdom, promised to send its army for protection if James declared it necessary. So promptly, and by the authority and goodwill of Spain herself, James was secure in his royal crown. He reigned for five glorious years, during which his wealth increased to astronomical proportions. To his queen was born a son and a daughter, a prince and a princess. And it seemed for a while at least that the land would never again be without a ruler. But then James' kingdom fell to revolution, to political intrigue in the royal court. No, no, it was discovered that James' documented royalty was false, and not only false, but, but forged. James himself, seeking power, had cleverly, surreptitiously gained access to the official records, had inserted counterfeit documents, and had carefully altered those which were genuine. So James was not of royal blood after all nor was he in any way entitled to the land of which he had crowned himself king. In fact, James, personally, was not even of Spanish descent. He was simply an American who had created for himself a noble ancestry, who had commissioned a tailor to provide him with a wardrobe befitting a nobleman, who had mastered the Spanish language and, moreover, a classical Spanish dialect. He had grown his sideburns to an appropriate length and in every other way imaginable, had perfected through painstaking study the imaginary character he became. An American named James Addison Rivas, terribly clever, if not quite clever enough. So the king lost his kingdom. But in the end, America gained from his loss. Because, you see... It had been through the technicality of a Spanish-American treaty that James had attempted to swindle his own native country out of her rightful territory, a little over a century ago, really. And the 11 million acres of which James had been temporarily, actually, legally king, the land which really was a kingdom, if only for one brief shining moment, was Arizona. Now, you know the rest of the story.